Hey guys, it's the captain here on Anderton's TV, and it's a very special day. Indeed. Um, I am joined by Matt, who some of you may recognise, who works for Boss now. I do. Um, please tell us the significance of this rather Rastafarian looking set <laughs> of Boss pedals sitting here. These are three of the most iconic uh, kind of guitar pedals ever made. They are the first three Boss pedals um, ever produced from 1977. But not only that, they are the first three ever produced. These have come direct from oh, sorry. Japan factory. So it's not that this particular model is, you're actually saying that this here yellow pedal here. Yeah. And this red These one ones have come straight from Boss Japan. They've survived wow. the whole time. Yeah. This one's hardly even damaged, isn't it? I know, these are You can tell which one the most popular one is, can't you? <laughs> out of the three. These are, yeah, small pieces of, um, of history. I would yeah. Say. Now, uh, there is a reason why we have uh, yep. got these three very cool looking pedals. And that's because, big reveal, do, 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 to celebrate the 40th anniversary, Boss have re-released these limited edition sets of the three pedals. And not just, um, these aren't modern remakes, are they? No, these are, uh, in effect, exact replicas, reissues of, of the original. And what's really significant about it is that Boss, uh, the first time that I met uh, Yoshi Kagami, who's the Boss president, they were saying that Boss are always a company that always look forward, always look to be progressive in um, their kind of designs. And reissues are something they never really considered. And then, lo and behold, this, to celebrate the 40th anniversary, this limited edition box set appears, and it was the, one of the, a great day when it appeared in my office. Well, <laughs> I opened it for the first time. Without further ado, let's hear some. Um, they don't look that dissimilar to a modern day boss pedal. So how in the last 40 years have, you know, have boss pedals evolved? Well, I think that's the, to me, that's the amazing thing is that the compact design itself has almost remained basically unchanged um, in 40 years. There's been minor movements of the, uh, the jack input, which has been recreated in the back. So they're actually in the original place. If you get a boss pedal, a modern day boss pedal, the jack is actually in a different place. So even the casing has been redesigned to match so the, the original. So the casing is not, the casing isn't the same as this, this on a modern uh, pedal. It's, yeah, this, uh, the actual size and dimension are the same, but there's some small movements in terms of like the, the jack size and everything. So that's been recreated in here. They've not just got another casing and gone, oh, well, we'll just put the 
the stuff inside that even kind of recreates. It's amazing things like, you know, like the fonts and everything have just stayed the same, haven't they, over yeah, like I mean, 40 years? Even in the box set, they've matched the original fonts because things like the actual text itself on some of these, like some of the models like the OD1, there was a couple of variations where the dash size is different, so they've actually modelled the original dash size. But there's so many great things that have been kind of become standard with yeah. the compact pedal in these. Most importantly, though, internally, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm guessing that's probably the, that was probably the biggest challenge, wasn't it, to get right compared Indeed. to... Indeed. And they've even matched, you know, the same processes that were made uh, on the original one to recreate in this one. So, cool story with the phaser, when they decided to do the phaser, FET transistors were a brand new kind of thing in the world of effects pedals, and they used four to create the waveform of the PH1. But they, to do that, they had to hand match all four FETs, and they're all hand matched in this as well. Um, the circuit boards aren't a standard circuit board; they've been redesigned to match the originals. It's all hand wired in Japan, so it's it's really yeah. nice that they've gone to extreme lengths to kind of match it. For sure. <laughs> some of the like the famous players that maybe adopted these early doors and some of the sounds from the sort of 70s and early 80s that would have been like the original format yeah um so one of the um key people with od1 was actually jeff beck so he had one of the original prototypes given to him at a show and then that's what turned in and he apparently the story goes and i uh, that he was given one uh, and then he used it that night so he was given one backstage and then he actually played it yeah. that night so it was unfinished and no one knew what it was and it was painted black on stage so no can one you imagine could... if that happened these days with YouTube <laughs> and Facebook and everyone going Jeff Beck's got a new pedal like that you know it would be like a billion people would know about yeah, it overnight but it, it kind of you know evolved especially in kind of like the 80s metal scene as a, a big thing yeah. because the thing with the overdrive it was the first pedal that actually got coined yeah. what an overdrive was so so many people used it in the 70s and 80s for kind of rock guitar in front of a Marshall amp yeah. Spectrum the guys like Michael Schenker yeah. for kind of that like Clive Sinclair Washington. was he an early adopter uh, I, th I think the thing is <laughs> <laughs> got in there. you got me there <laughs> too sure on the phaser but i know that just we en ended up selling well we sold 15 million stomp boxes now so it's there nice was a business. fair few players 15 in million yeah. i don't know if that sounds like you know on the one hand you just go 15 million yeah that's amazing and then on the other hand you sort of go 
Apple probably sell 15 million iPhones yeah. a month, don't they? And, and so I, don't, I, don't, I can't decide if it's a big number or not. Relative to guitar pedals, yeah, it's and I a suppose, huge number. And I suppose the thing is, is that these are still going. Yeah, you I mean, know, I, I, I think I had a conversation with an, an incredibly well-known boutique pedal maker, who I'm, I'm not going to say who it is, but his best-selling overdrive pedal that had been around mm. for like... Um, 20 odd years yeah he said he'd sold something like 50,000 of them yeah and he and he'd made a, his fortune yeah off of selling so when you sort of go yeah 50,000 of those or 15 million of yeah. these it's and it's the, just um, incredible number I mean they, these obviously went to evolve into other models OD1 to OD3 and, and things like the uh, SD1 which was the OD1 with the extra tone control we've been yeah. selling since 1987 I think so it's like 30 years in production still. So it's amazing that you can actually now get these ones in a in a cool box set as well. So how would you I mean obviously the, the you know the modern boss range is made in Taiwan. It's obviously mm -hmm. a, a, a more of a I guess a mass produced. It's it's probably more known as now an affordable uh, and reliable pedal yeah. option. Do you, who do you, I mean, these are obviously going, you know, the price and the desirability of these are obviously going to appeal to, you know, collectors and sort of boutique yeah. pedal owners. How do you, I mean, are you worried in, a, in any way that, that, you know, maybe the Boss brand doesn't relate to those guys anymore? Or? I think, I think in a way, I think it might maybe shock some people because, you know, maybe if you're not a bot, if you've not known Boss for the last, you know, yeah. 20 years as I have, or, you know, some people have obviously known Boss since 1977 and you see a DS1 now, which we've had in production for, you know, almost nearly 40 years and it's only, you know, 40 pounds. Seeing a box set, you kind of go, oh, it seems a bit pricey, but the level of, yeah. for me, having gone over to Japan, seen how it's been done, and even one of the um, key engineers and managers on, at Boss has worked for Roland since 1978. So he was actually involved in a lot of the early models yeah. as well. So they've known the processes, they've yeah. grown up with the processes and they yeah. can relate and go back to that as well. So you're not getting someone who's gone, well, I can just rebuild the circuit. I've got a schematic, yeah. Yeah. we'll pick some parts. These are done by people that have actually worked for Roland for that yeah. length of time as well. Uh, to be honest with you, the, the, the price, I, I only because I know a little bit about the sort of the cost to tool up to make a relatively limited run, mm. you know. So if you're sort of going, actually, do you know what we do need to, to tool up to make new casing because mm. we can't just use the existing casing, and we've got to hand wire and find the exact components that we need, and we're only ever going to make a relatively limited yeah. run of these, they will inevitably be pricey. These pedals. Although yeah. having said that, though, I kind of think you know if you know if Keeley or Full Tone or whoever Strymon or whatever yeah. came out with you know a box set of their three best pedals and it was seven hundred and fifty quid, no one would bat an eyelid, would yeah. they? So it's it's, anyway. it's it's it is strange, but right I suppose <laughs> I suppose the thing is for me as well, having been a Boss fan for a very long time, to actually see a kind of those three yeah. and and most people would have never actually you know they're so difficult to find second hand they still exist but yeah. the OD one obviously a lot of people see OD ones and they range on the second hand market and price but. The particular one that is in the box set is the 14 pin version, which they only did for a short period of time before they changed it because the actual chips themselves changed. So that goes back to the original spec as well. So it's it's the real kind of level of detail mm. they go into that you just don't get on a, I suppose in a way on a modern day compact. One of the things that I, I don't wouldn't say I feel sorry for kind of Roland and Boss for, but because it's, it's, it's not, that's the wrong uh, word, but I totally get this clash of cultures that, you know, Roland wants to be this forward-looking, visionary, mm. how can we uh, embrace technology, yeah. improve, do things better, not look back. I totally get that. And yet that's the total antithesis of what most guitarists want, yeah. who want a, a 59 Les Paul or a, or a, you know, an old 57 AC15 or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, they're, and they're like, no, 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 don't change anything. And I find it, what's the right word? I find it quite fascinating that that, that Ronan and Boss have been so um, reticent about doing a reissue. You know, mm. you would think commercially speaking, yeah. they should just be going, yeah, just reissue everything old because that's what yeah. people want. But they're like, 
well, I really don't want to do this. It's, it's kind of I weird, suppose it's, it? it's funny, really, because if you think about when these three were released, they were they were forward thinking even then. So these sort of effects didn't really exist on a on a mass market, and you know, with the kind of details that they have now, yeah. and they've always done that. So all their comp compacts have always looked forward, and then it's only now people are going, oh, but I want the old ones. So I think yeah, it's taken a while mm. for them to kind of go. You know, maybe we should kind of bring these back, yeah. and mainly for people to hear them and kind of really where it all started for Boss as well. I do think that you should consider doing relict versions as well. Because <laughs> let's be honest with you, out of these two, come on, go, which one is the cool looking one? Everybody wants the one that looks like it's been through the uh, battle, hasn't it? But no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a, and I'm only even slightly kidding there. I think that could be the next thing, relict, relict pedals. pedals. We'll yeah. see. If someone wants to do it then. <laughs> um, anyway, man. Well, look, so when are these coming? So these will be due in shops within the next sort of eight weeks or so. So Lim September -y time. Yeah. Um, completely limited. 1500 uh, worldwide, limited edition box set with the certificate and everything as well. Once they're gone, they are gone. Well, I'm loving that. Thank you very much, Matt, for no dropping worries. by to show us these. Uh, I'll put a link in the description section below uh, if you want to find out more. I do know that Andertons has ordered um, a fair few of these and we've taken orders for about half of them already. So I don't know how many will be left by the time this video goes live. I'm really interested to see the debate that's gonna go on in the comments section about you know what whether you think it's a cool thing or you think it's a bit pricey or whatever you wanna do. Every comment's valid, fire away. But yes, without doubt, little piece of history here. Um, yeah, it's I'm a very, it. very cool. And I'm super excited to be yeah. a part of it. Cool. All right, cheers guys. We'll see you next time. Everybody, thanks for watching the Andertons Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting, and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.